Hi, my name is Dr. Christopher Parks. I'm an interventional pulmonologist in the Atlanta area. Uh, I treat a, a variety of pulmonary patients with both malignant and non-malignant uh, conditions and patients with both early and late stage uh, lung cancer. Uh, we, uh, one of the modalities that's available to us uh, for treatment is uh, photoforin and photodynamic therapy. Uh, we routinely use photodynamic therapy in conjunction with chemotherapy uh, and it can be used uh, in sequence uh, with radiation therapy. Uh, the case I'd like to present today is of a 63-year-old gentleman who had been previously diagnosed with stage 3A adenocarcinoma of the lung at another facility. Uh, he had received uh, concurrent uh, chemo and radiation therapy uh, and was not felt to be a good candidate for uh, surgical resection. Uh, he was uh, followed uh, with routine uh, CAT scans and had stable disease uh, for uh, several years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, eventually, uh, he was noted to have multiple positive lymph nodes uh, on his CAT scan, which was followed uh, by a PET scan, uh, which showed activity in several of these lymph nodes. It was at this time that he presented to our facility for additional diagnostic uh, workup and treatment evaluation. The initial uh, diagnostic evaluation was a bronchoscopy with endobronchial ultrasound, and biopsies of the lymph nodes were obtained showing recurrent uh, adenocarcinoma of the lung. Um, of note, uh, at the time of bronchoscopy, extensive endobronchial disease was uh, seen, which was not appreciated on either the CAT scan or the PET scan. Uh, there was nearly occlusive disease of the left main stem bronchus and extensive uh, disease in the right main stem bronchus. Uh, at this time, uh, we uh, presented him to our multidisciplinary tumor board, and a recommendation was made to uh, proceed with uh, chemotherapy as well as photodynamic therapy. Uh, he was injected with the photoforin and 48 hours later brought back for his first activation. Uh, he was activated uh, in both the left and right uh, main stem bronchi uh, with 200 uh, joules worth of energy. 48 hours later, he was brought back for his second activation uh, and his first uh, clean-out. And at this time, he was noticed to have an extensive inflammatory uh, reaction, particularly in the left main stem bronchus. Uh, this was uh, cleaned with both uh, cryotherapy as well as uh, forceps, uh, uh, and we were able to achieve good airway uh, patency. He was reactivated uh, with 200 joules. He was brought back at uh, day number seven for uh, a routine clean-out bronchoscopy and at that time was noted to have, again, extensive inflammatory uh, reaction, which was cleaned with both cryotherapy uh, as well as uh, forceps. We were able to achieve good airway patency, uh, but due to the extensive nature of the inflammation, it was felt safest to continue with surveillance uh, bronchoscopy. Uh, on a weekly basis to allow us to continue to uh, remove the necrotic debris. He eventually received four bronchoscopies uh, with decreasing amounts of inflammation and by bronchoscopy number four, it was felt uh, to uh, be safe to wait until the uh, routine follow-up bronchoscopy. Uh, this was done on uh, approximately month six, and on this bronchoscopy, he was found to have no evidence of disease uh, in the airway with complete resolution of both uh, the inflammatory as well as the malignant portions uh, of the disease. Initially, we were concerned uh, with uh, the depth of the lesion, um, and at approximately 0.5 to 1 centimeters, uh, whether photodynamic therapy would be able to be effective at this depth. Um, and this patient had an excellent response. Uh, we were, uh, this demonstrates that both, uh, there's both an, uh, a, a prolonged inflammatory response in this patient's case, uh, almost uh, six weeks uh, to the photodynamic therapy, as well as the ability to achieve uh, greater depths than we had previously uh, used uh, this treatment modality for. Necrosis was seen uh, up to three months uh, after the initial activation with photodynamic therapy, uh, indicating uh, that there was continued to be uh, inflammation uh, in this area. Uh, this likely indicates a uh, continued activation of the immune system uh, uh, with a response to the uh, malignancy.
Please see full prescribing information for Photofrin, Porphyrmer sodium, for injection at www.photofrin.com. For more information about Photofrin, Porphyrmer sodium, for injection, or if there are any questions regarding the information provided, visit www.photofrin.com or please contact the Medical Information Department at 1-866-248-2039. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. Photofrin, Porphyrmer Sodium for Injection, and OptiGuide are registered trademarks of Concordia Laboratories Incorporated. Pinnacle Biologics and the logo of Pinnacle Biologics are trademarks of Pinnacle Biologics Incorporated. Photofrin, Porphyrmer Sodium for Injection, and is distributed in the United States by Pinnacle Biologics Incorporated, Bannockburn, Illinois, 60015. Photofrin, Porphyrmer Sodium for Injection, should not be used in patients with porphyria, existing tracheoesophageal or bronchoesophageal fistula, tumors eroding into a major blood vessel. Emergency treatment of patients with severe acute respiratory distress caused by an obstructing endobronchial lesion because 40 to 50 hours are required between injection of photofrin, porphyrmer sodium for injection, and laser light treatment, and esophageal or gastric varices or esophageal ulcers greater than 1 cm in diameter. Important warnings and precautions using photofrin, porphyrmer sodium for injection include gastroesophageal fistula, and perforation. Do not initiate photofrin, porphyrmer sodium, for injection and with photodynamic therapy, PDT, in patients with esophageal tumors eroding into the trachea or bronchial tree or bronchial wall. Pulmonary and gastroesophageal hemorrhage. Assess patients for tumors eroding into a pulmonary blood vessel and esophageal varices. Do not administer light directly to an area with esophageal varices. High-grade dysplasia, HGD, in Barrett's esophagus, BE. After treatment of HGD in BE, conduct endoscopic biopsy surveillance every three months until four consecutive negative evaluations for HGD have been recorded. Photosensitivity and ocular photosensitivity. Observe precautions to avoid exposure of skin and eyes to direct sunlight or bright indoor light for at least 30 days. Instruct patients when outdoors to wear dark sunglasses which have an average light transmittance of less than 4% for at least 30 days and until ocular sensitivity resolves. Use before or after radiotherapy. Allow 2 to 4 weeks between PDT and subsequent radiotherapy. Chest pain. Substernal chest pain can occur. Airway obstruction and respiratory distress. Administer with caution to patients with tumors in locations where treatment-induced inflammation can obstruct the main airway. Monitor patients closely between the laser light therapy and the mandatory debridement bronchoscopy for any evidence of respiratory distress. Esophageal strictures. Esophageal strictures can occur. Hepatic and renal impairment. Patients with hepatic or renal impairment may need longer precautionary measures for photosensitivity. Thromboembolism. Thromboembolic events can occur. Embryo-fetal toxicity. May cause embryo-fetal toxicity. Advise females of reproductive potential, of the potential risk to a fetus, and to use effective contraception. Most common adverse reactions reported during clinical trials, greater than 10% of patients, are esophageal cancer, anemia, pleural effusion, pyrexia, constipation, nausea, chest pain, pain, abdominal pain, dyspnea, photosensitivity reaction, pneumonia, vomiting, insomnia, back pain, pharyngitis. Obstructing endobronchial cancer, dyspnea, photosensitivity reaction, hemoptysis, pyrexia, cough, pneumonia. Superficial endobronchial tumors, exudate, photosensitivity reaction, bronchial obstruction, edema, bronchostenosis. High-grade dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus, photosensitivity reaction, esophageal stenosis, vomiting, chest pain, nausea, pyrexia, constipation, dysphagia, abdominal pain, pleural effusion, dehydration.
Other photosensitizing agents may increase the risk of photosensitivity reaction. Because of the potential for serious adverse reactions in the breastfed infant, advise patients that breastfeeding is not recommended during treatment with photofren, porphyrmer sodium for injection, and for five months after the last dose.